Hey guys, it's Troy from the KOTLC fanbase, and today, I'll tell you about the Lost Cities creatures that are mentioned in the KOTLC series. This video topic will be split into parts, as there are many creatures to fantasize over. So y'all, if you want to learn about some fantastical creatures, or just brush on up on them, then keep watching. There are many creatures in the KOTLC series, so let's start out with the intelligent ones. The intelligent species are basically ones that sign treaties with the Elven Council. There are six intelligent species, the ogres, dwarves, trolls, goblins, gnomes, and elves, of course. The humans could also be considered intelligent since they once were, and I think you know what a human is, so let's start with the elves. Elves are human-like creatures but have very unique differences. First off, every elf has blue eyes. Any shade. Well, except for Sophie. Also, elves can perform skills that humans can't, like telekinesis, channeling, or blinking in and out of light. Most elves also have a special ability, one that can help them in their jobs in everyday life. Some examples of special abilities are Hydrokinesis, the ability to control the flow of water. Telepathy, the ability to read one's mind. And Flasher, the ability to create and manipulate light. Anyways, yeah, elves can do pretty cool and crazy things. Another thing that you humans have on elves is elves' immortality. Elves can live forever, basically. And as they age, the only thing that changes past adulthood, physically, is their ears. They start to point at the tips, becoming the elves' ears you have heard in stories growing up. Elves' government consists of 12 strong individuals to make up a council. They all vote on decisions so that the world has its balance. No counselor is higher ranked than another. The second tier of the elven government is the missionaries. They help the council fulfill any tasks that need to be done, or any tasks that will get them dirty. The next tier of the elven world is the nobility. Any person that has a special ability and has completed their studies in the elite Towers and Foxfire is eligible for the nobility. Most elves are a part of the nobility, and if you aren't, you're most likely a talentless, the last tier of elven society. Talentless elves are really discriminated against in the public. They didn't manifest an ability, so they are officially uncool and unfit for a general elven society. They don't show up on the matchmaking list either, meaning that they will become a bad match if a talentless marries someone with a talent. To sum it up for you, being a talentless is terrible for your future. Anyways, from elves' impeccable beauty and immortal age, elves are amazing. The next of the intelligent species that we are going to talk about are the gnomes, my absolute favorite species in the series. Gnomes are plant-like creatures that resemble plants more than animals. They have earthy, rough skin and bright green thumbs. Gnomes also have wide, gray eyes. To add on to the fact that gnomes are more plant than animal, gnomes feed off the sunlight, like plants in photosynthesis, powering them throughout the day. Gnomes don't need to sleep, ever, because of the fact. The internal makeup is also of a plant. Their minds are like forests including to Sophie. Gnomes can also help plant life grow and strive by singing. So yeah, I absolutely adore them. The gnomes' relationship between gnomes and elves is very important, mainly for the plot in Book 4. Without the elves, gnomes wouldn't exist, and without the gnomes, elves would have a hard time living. After the gnomes' former country, Sarenvale, was taken by the ogres, which I will mention later, the gnomes sought help. They eventually stumbled across the elves, and the species came up with a treaty to balance each other out. In return for the elves' protection and care, the gnomes would help the elves with gardening in the lost cities, and help out with any of the elves' tasks. In Never Seen, the fourth book, the plague was released on the gnomes, and hundreds of gnomes were infected. Kala, a gnome working with the Black Swan, sacrificed her life to become the Panic Tree to cure the infected gnomes. The plague has actually been released on the gnomish leaders years ago. The leaders died, becoming the infamous Four Seasons Tree. Before they died, they told the council to not tell the gnomes what had killed them. The gnomish government is very different from the elves. The gnomes don't have a specific leader. They pick an ambassador to represent their species when in need, asking in Lodestar for the Peace Summit to write the new Ogre Treaty. The known gnomes in the series are Kala, the gnome that sacrificed herself for the health and safety of other gnomes, Lur, Mitya, and Briar, more gnomes that worked for the Black Swan, Chloris, Nazreen, Vred, 
Amasi, and Sayor are more gnomes that Sophie meets. Last but not least, gnomes working at Havenfield, including Collis and niece Flory, are included. Now let's leaf the gnomes be and introduce the goblins. Goblins. Gobbly gobbly goblins. Gigantic girthly gobbly goblins. Let's gobliny stop saying goblins. Okay. The intelligent species of the goblins are species in the lost cities that provide bodyguards for important elves. They have a huge grudge against ogres. I mean, they have a huge, huge grudge. Goblins absolutely hate them. Anyways, goblins are ordinarily taller than six feet. The goblin city that they live in is made entirely out of gold, as it symbolizes something weak, as the goblins are strong. The golden goblin capital is called Gildingham, and has a grand golden pyramid palace in the center. I should also mention the Hall of Heroes, to honor the deceased Brielle of the series. The Hall of Heroes is where every orified goblin is. Orification is when a goblin's body is turned to gold. Goblins do this when one dies with a fight in battle, earning themselves the grand honor. Usually, a massive amount of the goblins attend the ceremony, as well as the goblin's ruler. Speaking of the goblin's ruler, that would be Queen Hilda. The queen lives in the capital, Gildingham, and has a giant snake for a pet named Twinkle that moves her carriage at supersonic speeds. She is first introduced in Lodestar, but mentioned before a couple times. When Queen Hilda hears that Sophie will attend the peace summit, the queen gives Sophie a list of things that she wants Sophie to support. Things such as, she wants the ogres to turn over all their weapons and agree to stop any military training, and for King Dimitar to give the queen the ogre that killed Brielle. The only other time that Queen Hilda is seen in the books is when she states that Fintan should be allowed in the peace summit to represent the Neverseen. Another thing that I can mention about the goblins are the goblin throwing stars. The goblin throwing stars are metal weapons that are used by most goblins. On the cover of Flashback, Sophie is throwing one at an unknown figure. Keith used the stars to wound his mom and successfully sliced open her shoulder. The only known goblins in the series are Sandor, Grizzle, Wolzer, Cadoc, Levis, Brielle who's dead, and Queen Hilda. That's about it for the six foot menaces, let's move on to the dwarves. Let's talk about the dwarves. Dwarves are fuzzy brown creatures that are one of the five intelligent creatures. They are unusually seen above ground, as the light is far too bright for their eyes, but the dwarves can tunnel through the earth effortlessly. They can additionally detect Maxidian, a precious ore that they can mine from the extensive depths of the earth. There are 30 dwarves working for the Neverseen, and an unrevealed number of dwarves fighting for the Black Swan. The leader of the dwarves is King Enki. He is the only dwarf to have no hair. He represented the dwarves at the Peace Summit in Lodestar. His crown is cut from a singular piece of Tregedon carapace. King Enki supports the Black Swan, but is not literally against the Council. He lets the organization use a live tree in an underground cave system that holds a flourishing forest. He also produces the Black Swan with means to transport themselves out of exile. The only known dwarves in the series are Krikor, Ermi, Deceased, and King Inky. Alright, let's move on to the Ogres. The Ogres, as I said before, are traditional enemies of the Goblins. They are about 6 feet tall, and King Dimitar, the Ogre's king, looks like a gorilla without hair and has pointed teeth, according to Sophie. The ogres live in Ravagog, which was originally claimed by the gnomes and called Sarenvale, which I said earlier. Their alliance with the council is pretty important to the plot in many books, so I'll explain. King Dimitar is not very friendly with the council, especially after Sophie tried to use tele telepathy on him. The ogres are not officially allied with the elves, but they do have a treaty with them. At the peace summit in Lodestar, King Dimitar signed a treaty agreeing that he and the other ogres would leave the elves alone, as long as the elves did the same. This treaty was sort of broken when Sophie and Keith entered Ravagog to deliver Lady Gizla's note. Some advantages, or shall I call them powers, that the ogres have starts with Aramark. The ogres have an enzyme by the name Aramark. It is a tracking system which can be revealed using Revel Dust, a powder. The Aramark is transferred by a personal contact. The only way to treat it is with Picatine, a liquid that melts off your skin. It has appeared on Sylvanie's tail, Sophie, Keith, and Alvin's hands, and on Keith's family crest pin. Another trick up their sleeves is force shifting, 
which is used to launch themselves to safety using a special type of tech. Yet another thing that the ogres created was the plague for the gnomes. The sole cure to the plague is the panic blossoms. Let's see how to pronounce this word. Gruesome dodge. The gruesome dodge is an ogre's mind trick that can cause a lot of pain through sounds. Besides that, the only power that the ogres have are basically their amazing strength, as Sandor was struggling against the ogre he was fighting on Mount Everest. We should now talk about some of the ogre's inventions slash sciencey things. We should start with the mark chains. A mark chain is a teeny tiny self-sustained world of microorganisms that ogres wear. They can sniff and smell the presence of the mark chains, and if they don't smell on someone strolling through their city, they know they're not supposed to be there. Another thing that the ogres found and harvested is soperdine, which is emitted, excuse me, Bucalosexia, a hybridized bacterium. The bacteria is harmless, but the soporidine is a deadly sedative. Although lab it is laborious to produce, it can be accumulated. Sleep-induced flowers found in the Forbidden Cities roasted by Everglades can nurture the bacterium long enough to obtain the sedative. Let's talk about the ogre military and royal family. But first, the Mercadier. The Mercadier is an ogre military class. King Dimtar's army has no ranks. The ogres are all of the same class when fighting. All ogres reply straight to him, but King Dimitar holds a small group responsible for making sure his orders are given out. And those soldiers are the Mercadiers. Instead of bowing to the king for respect, Mercadiers salute by sweeping an arm from their nose to their chest in a tight zigzag. If a Mercadier fails to complete the assignment that they are given, they are punished with the Shamniv a dagger with a serrated knife. When one has done a terrible job, the Shamniv can be dipped in flesh-eating bacteria. The known Mercadiers of the series is Keef, Lady Gisla, and Alvar Vacker. Now, onto the royal family of King Dimitar, Queen Gundala, and Princess Rome Hilda. King Dimitar is the king of the ogre population. He rules in the area of Ravagog, Gnome's former country Saravel. His clothing consists of what looks like bolted steel underwear. His body is shaped like a bald gorilla on a ton of steroids, with skin that Sophie says looks like weathered marble. The king used to have gigantic sparkly yellowish stones in the middles of his stretched earlobes, but Keith took off one during a fight in Nightfall. King Demitar's hairless head is marked with the black squealy writing of a sort. He has an enormous nose, gray pointed teeth, and two silver eyes tucked into his skin among the mass of lumps and bumps on his face. Dimitar doesn't fully support the elven ways, but he sure does admit in Neverseen that his subjects are not involved with the Neverseen group, except for some rebels among Ravagog. There's even talk in Nightfall of Dimitar forming an alliance with the Black Swan. We didn't learn about King Dimitar's wife, Queen Gundula, until Nightfall. Sophie only learned of her presence after she noticed a secondary throne in the king's palace. Dimitar seems to be very secretive about his wife, and she does not seem to be a warrior. Romhilda is a King Dimitar's and Queen Gundula's daughter, making her a princess. This name is taken from her grandmother, and it means battle. But Romhilda, or should we say Ro, likes to keep it short. So she likes people to call her Ro, as said before. She is Keith's bodyguard, as King Dimitar assigned her to him. Ro is described in the series as a leanly muscled ogre fighting machine. Her ash-colored hair falls down to her chin and is usually described as stylish, with her hair and heavy dark eyeliner. When she was first introduced in Nightfall, she was wearing a metal breastplate and metal diaper, like the king. Romhilda is more chill than her father, but despite that, she's very competitive. She's seen as normally making jokes and teasing the elves being so uptight. The last significant person to the ogres is Lady Candon. Lady Candon studied the ogres for a long time, conducting reports and studies about them. She is the only elf to be given a mark chain, permission into their city. Lady Candon knows the ogres. The known ogres of the series are King Dimitar, Queen Gundula, Ro, the ogres working for the Neverseen, and Dimitar's guards. Phew! That was a lot of information to relay. Last creatures, the trolls. Trolls are another intelligent specimen. They are first introduced in Lodestar, Book 5. They are ruled by Empress Purnau, a leader that attended the Peace Summit in Luminaria. Trolls age in reverse, starting out looking old and slowly getting more and more young-looking. 
It's mentioned in the second book, Exile, that trolls are not vegetarians. Empress Purnal, the ruler of the trolls, attends the peace summit. She is shown in the plot of the book only once, and I hope Shannon Messenger can touch more about her and the other trolls in the flashback. Purnal immediately likes Sophie, admiring her intelligence, skills, and humbleness. Alongside Queen Hilda, she asks for Fenton to be included in the summit. And that about wraps up the trolls. Also, this video. Today's shoutout goes to Meg Wormy. She says, Have you guys ever thought of doing some kind of challenge vid? Also, congrats on the subs. Can I get a shoutout, please? There you go, Meg. You got your shoutout. Thanks for the kind words. Your question will be answered in the Q&A, which is approaching. Only one more subscriber till we can film this thing. Or when I'm filming this, we only have one more subscriber. For more information revolving around the Q&A, watch that video. Anyways, if you guys want a shout out in the next one, comment below asking for one, or say something positive about our channel. That is it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of work was put into this video, so please leave a like as it will tell us that you enjoy these types of videos. If you want to be notified when another video comes out, then hit the subscribe button and ding that bell next to it. Feel free to add anything that you want to say down in the comments and we will get back to you. Okay guys, see you in the next one. Elves government consists of 12 strong individuals. My paper is not in the correct place. Jeez, man. Another trick up their sleeves is force shifting, which is used to launch themselves to safety. Safety. Safety, 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 safety. The known gnomes in the series are called...